Hey everyone, welcome to Fat Mascara. I'm Jess. I'm Jen. Let's take a deep look at the beauty culture, shall we? <laughs> a deep look that sounded... <laughs> well, I'm trying to remind my... people what our podcast is about. I think we need, I think we need a more um, fulfilling <laughs> Workshop intro. Workshop that tagline. Yeah. Sorry about that. Hi, Jess. Hey, what's going on? Well, I just saw you yesterday, so I'm very excited to talk to you about what we did because we didn't get a chance to... Rehash is not a word, is it? Recap. Recap. Thank you. Let, yeah. So yesterday I popped in to, what was the spa that we went to? Le, the Levy? place is called Le, Le Beauty, NYC. Le Beauty. Yeah. It was on 39th Street. It was tucked away and it was really like a little secret spot, a little hair spa which are all the rage right now, a little head massage. Well, they do more than head massages. They do. To celebrate Jennifer Aniston's latest launch. Now, Jennifer was not there herself. No, but we both got to go together. When's the last time we've been to a proper press event together? Like since our days well, in I the thought first was, tower. I thought there were going to be two. I thought I was going to see you twice last, yesterday, but I got the date wrong for something. Well, we made it to one. I yes. know. And thank God I mentioned it to you because... You were going to show up to that other party? Yes. <laughs> yes, I got the date wrong. I know. I can be a little funny But it was lately. so fun to see your face there. It felt like old times. It was really fun. I know. I really do miss seeing you in the Hearst Tower, but neither <laughs> neither of us are there anymore. So we have to see you. Um, you have like, to see me basically events. in the spa. I felt like at one point there's two therapists for this head spa, right? So you can we explain head, what a head spa we is? We should, we should. So this is when you're laying flat, like on a massage table, but this shampoo bowl that you would have at a normal hair salon is next to the massage table. So when you're laying flat on your back, your head is in the shampoo bowl. And this is not a normal shampoo bowl. I have pictures. I will show the pictures on our Instagram. I've got some video, right? I got video of just getting it done. So I got done my treatment first and I walked over. I was like, can you imagine if you were getting I didn't know like, it was you. I heard <laughs> I voice and I was like, hello? <laughs> Hello? Like, you because have an eye prone. mask on. You're trying to relax. Actually, it's super, super relaxing. And somebody walks in and is like, can I film you? <laughs> so, well, I, did, I didn't what recognize I did your voice because there were so many voices. And I was wearing a towel, so I felt very exposed and vulnerable. Yes, you have to wear a towel because the head spa involves your entire clavicles up. Like you're getting a full, you're getting a neck massage, you're getting shoulder massage. But the best part for me is that it has this like, I liken it to a sprinkler system, like those old school sprinklers. It's like a rainbow shape, right? Like a slip and slide. Yeah, like that, that would that would wet the slip and slide. That they roll sort of over to your neck, and it dribbles like rain, warm water onto mm -hmm. your clavicle and neck while she's giving you a shampoo, a conditioner. It was so. Relaxing. They wash your hair like seven times. Keep washing, honey. Keep washing. <laughs> Keep washing. I do think. That I'd love to see the water bill. This is where my head goes. I've gotten into such a practical <laughs> mode. I was like, what's the water bill on this place? And there's so many of them right now in New York. That's where my head was. But they were using the, the Jennifer Aniston product called Lola V. Yeah, exfoliate and detox scalp shampoo. New launch from them. Yes, new launch. It's all about the skinification. That word just like kills me. The skinification of hair. So it's about getting your scalp clean without any physical... I think no, it's physical and chemical exfoliant, right? Very gentle. I am cynical about a scalp scrub because I'm like, and if it's a shampoo, is it going to rough up my hair strands or my scalp? Is it going to be irritating? I'm always very concerned about color. Yeah. This one was really gentle. And this was really so gentle. Good. I didn't even know that there was a scalp scrub happening. Does it come with a person who can massage it into my head every time yeah. I use it? Because Jen Aniston, that would be a great idea. Just saying. <laughs> when I was at the launch yesterday, Jen, I was thinking like, <laughs> other Jen, Jennifer Aniston's picture was there. And I was I kept on kind of having to remind myself, oh yeah, this is like a celebrity brand. It doesn't read like a celebrity brand, right? You're absolutely right. It's one of those brands. I know all the celebrities always want to be like, it should be able to live without me, which I think is like, yeah. sure. But let's be honest, you're the one selling it. This one from the start kind of felt like, you know what? I would buy that detangler, whoever was selling it, because it's so good. You know what I mean? Yeah, you kind of want to say like, oh, but it's like not, yeah, it's not really a celebrity. It really isn't a celebrity brand because the products are great. I use the conditioner, the, the treatment as a conditioner sometimes. I've actually- Okay, okay, Blake Lively. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. By the way, we recorded that segment 
before all the brouhaha. So if you're going oh, back we and listening, about, like, Brown two weeks ago, yeah, yeah I don't want to. Yeah. No, no, there's a moratorium on. Okay, no more BBB. Here. Yeah. Gotcha. But the, the treatment's great. The detangler, the glossing detangler is fantastic. That is actually a repurchased product. Like that, that is really like a replenishment product. Me too. I bought. I bought it after I got the press sample. It's not just a detangler. The people don't know. I think it's a styler too. Oh, okay. I never thought of it that way. I thought it was just like a, like a conditioner and it a is detangler. a conditioner. And like, but I like it for air drying because I think it does give some shape to my texture. Anyway, it's a great product. But it's a great product and. You don't, I mean, I know that she's like a busy lady and she probably wasn't going to make like every press event, but like <laughs> there was just this black and white picture of her there. Wait, but there was a phone. So oh, the phone. let me say, it, I don't know if you did this because so Jess and I were getting like couples massages basically at one point I realized we were next to each other getting our head spa treatment with the shampoo. But then when we left, you were getting a blowout, but I left before you. They had a phone set up where you could leave a message for Jennifer Aniston yeah. So right near that picture that you're talking about. And I was like, is she really going to listen to these? And they were like, no, she like, she's involved. And I was like, okay, fine. I picked up the phone and then like, what'd you say? Oh, I got so nervous. So I, I was trying to be all cool. And I was just like, keep doing what you're doing. You're, glossing to <laughs> you're giving her the encouragement she needed to and keep at her like Addison needs <laughs> Jennifer <laughs> Sullivan's like, you're doing great, honey. <laughs> like, I don't know what I was saying. And then I quickly like hung up and got embarrassed. What did you leave a message? Wait, wait side side note. I said something like that to Naomi Watts in person once, and like I still die. I was just like, <laughs> I said, you're great. It was like after a glass of wine Good at like an you. event. I was like, you're great. I just think just keep doing what you're doing. Like your movies and you know, everything you're doing for women. And like the next day I was like dying. <laughs> As if she doesn't have an entire team that's helped her plan the strategy of her career. Like yeah. many, many awards, Oscar. <laughs> I just think women should yeah. always be supporting women. So I don't think they no, think she twice. was so nice. But yeah, I did the same. Same thing. So did you leave a message for <laughs> Jen? Other Jen? I left too. <laughs> you did? The first one, I was like, Jen, I love your movies. I was like, Along Came Polly is one of my favorite feel-good movies. It is hysterical. I can watch it like over and over again. I love Friends with Money. That's another one. If you have, by the way, that if you guys haven't watched that one, that's amazing. She's in so many good, like, she does the biggies, the breakup. I didn't mention that. Breakup is amazing. Along Came Polly is amazing. But, like, Friends with Money is, like, freaking incredible. Then I was like, what else did I say? I said You gave else. her an IMDb report? No, yeah, exactly. I was like, keep <laughs> acting. I was like, you got this. I think you've really got something here. And then I was like, the beauty line is incredible. And then I said something else and I hung up and then I was like, oh my God, why didn't I ask her to come on Fat Mascara? It's like, <gasps> I need, clearly I need PR help. You called back? and you- I called back and I said, please come on Fat Mascara. We can talk about <gasps> anything you want. I said, I will allow a complete question approval. Jen, I think I allowed editing approval. I know that we don't like that. We don't do that, but for, I know we don't I guess I'll make an exception for yes, Jen. I will not ask Anis. any questions. You, so you asked her, I thought about being like, should I just mention Fat Mascara and see if she would yes. come on? I even told her we had a host named Jen. <gasps> that was your selling point. <laughs> Jen is a lifestyle. It's not a name. <laughs> oh my God. Do you think she's listening to it right now and considering coming on our podcast? Guys, you'll let us have that celebrity. I know we all have celebrity line fatigue, but come on. She can call all the shots. <laughs> she can come on and interview us. She doesn't want to do that. No, thank you. That's a <laughs> She bad can idea. come on the show and just talk about her line and hang up. I, you know what? Even if she comes on, though, I'm not going to let her come on and QVC it. Like, no. I want to talk to her about her style. I have so many questions. Jen, come on the show. We'll talk about Lola V. Shore. I want to talk to her about her movies. I think she her movie, She just always picks good movies. Yeah, it's like when we had Gwen Stefani on. Sure, we talked yeah. about your line, but we really wanted to like talk about the music. She, talk, she talked about her songwriting. Sure, yeah, yeah. She talked this about is the she... kind of conversation we'll have. We're deep people. We're deeply serious people, <laughs> yeah. Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> So please take our word for it. Come on the show. <laughs> anyway, it was fun to see you at an event. <laughs> it was really fun. I know we need to go to more. We need to go to more. We have a, a interesting grab bag of like news to get to this week, some business news, some design stuff. So we're going to end the gen appreciation part of the podcast and move <laughs> into the news. Let's just take a quick break first. Okay, 
Well, we're going to start off with a with a quick business desk because this is news that has been rumored for a long time and actually happened last week. Estee Lauder companies announced that their CEO, Fabrizio Freda, would be stepping down. Why does this matter to you? Because this is big news in the beauty industry. Like Estee Lauder companies own so many brands that we know and love. Things have been going on at that company. Their stock price was falling. He's done an amazing job, but I feel like this happens all the time in like, I don't know, since I've watched Succession, I feel like I understand how the boardroom works, which clearly <laughs> I don't. But I'm like, they had to signal to their investors that they were doing something. They're making changes, which is partially kind of what this is about. So he did finally say he will be stepping down and now it's on. So this is the Succession thing. Who? will take over Estee Lauder companies. And one of our fellow journalists, it was Rachel Strugatz mm-hmm. at Puck News. She has odds on Jane Lauder, who is the company's chief data officer and executive VP of enterprise marketing. And of course, Estee's granddaughter. I love that. Do you, do you have bets on anyone? The other rumor I've been hearing is that there'll be a co-CEO, which I think is BS. Like, if I was a woman and I was handed the reins to a company and said, except you're going to be co-CEO with X person, even if it was because it was signaling to the board and the investor something, like, I feel like I'd feel slighted a little bit. So I want her, I'm my money's on her solo. And co-CEO is tricky. I'm not close enough to the business, but I think co-CEO is tricky. Yeah, but I've seen it with other beauty, like when there's a duo that fa- – even an indie brand that fa- that starts a beauty brand yeah. and it's co-CEOs, haven't you noticed that like within a year or two, it's always just one? Or the, the responsibilities have to be very clearly delineated. Right, like you're the creative director and you're the CEO. And of course they would say that. But um, so this is just all to say that the changes afoot at Estee Lauder companies, including, you know, because they want to fire up some business. I thought this was a smart business move. I'm just going to add this in here. Just at the end of last week announced Angelina Jolie is Tom Ford's, which of course is owned by Estee Lauder Companies, first ever celebrity face for beauty. She's going to front a campaign for their runaway lip color. Jess, as a, an, an industry thought leader, what, what's your take on Angelina <laughs> Jolie? <laughs> I just threw to you. Like when I do like a news segment on video, I like threw to you like on the ground reporting Is it going to say hurricane? industry <laughs> thought leader in small font underneath my name? <laughs> Wow. I was cur- I haven't talked to you about this, so I am curious what you thought. No, I know. We haven't spoken about this. I think Angelina Jolie is very selective about any brand that she works with. Off the top of my head, she's worked with... Guerlain. Guerlain. This is a long time ago, but she worked with St. John. That was really short-lived. Oh, yeah. But there's always been a, a charitable aspect to the brands she's worked with. So she are almost always been like a philanthropic. Yeah, with Guerlain, it was a huge push for yeah, uh, yeah. the B thing. So it's not like the B thing, but uh, yeah. So she's, my point is like, she's just very thoughtful about the brand she works with. So for her to work with Tom Ford Beauty is a big deal. I thought marketing wise, think about Angelina Jolie when she was young. There's enough nostalgia and it's retro enough that this is like sexy again. Like Tom Ford is all about like, sexiness and a little bit of danger. I was about to say right? danger, yeah. Yeah, and it reminds me of when she was first seen on red carpets and stuff and she wore the vial of blood. She seems like she'd be like a CIA agent. And I feel like a CIA agent would totally wear Tom Ford, like deep v. I'm picturing like Madonna in the deep V. That was Gucci. Well, oh, Tom Ford was a designer then, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so late 90s, early aughts. And like that's- The 70s, yeah, kind of look. More than 20 years ago at this point. So it kind of ties in that like sexy danger thing. I think that works for me. I think you're right. If you're doing like a brand diagram, like it's sexy, it's dangerous, but also I think it like speaks to their customer now who it's like, she's sexy, but she's also sophisticated. They're not chasing. I haven't seen what their plans are, but if I were working at Tom Ford, I wouldn't be chasing the super young Sephora customer, I would be trying to capture somebody who's a little bit more sophisticated and like- There's other Estee Lauder brands that can go for the youth vote. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they might be trying to chase it all, you know, because I've- they, The they youth won't. vote. <laughs> just no, political. Maybe, they, you know maybe I mean. they're doing a, a playful kind of, maybe they want it all. I feel like you kind of can't ignore the younger set. But she's a very sophisticated, sexy person, but it also is that little like, I'm not old. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think they're towing a really interesting line and I think it's really smart and it's quite a coup. It'll be interesting to watch everything that's going on there. Okay. So let's move on. Shall we? So this isn't hard news, guys, but it's more of a today in packaging moment. Maybe that's a new segment. I don't know. We'll see 
We'll see how many of these we can we can get we together. Have, right now we have business desk, science corner. corner. There's been some other ones. There's we've been tried some other ones. Like I stuck. don't know. So this is packaging. Today in packaging. Today, today in, oh, pa- sorry. Today in packaging. Okay, yeah. got it. Today in packaging. Okay. So something that my team at Moda and I have been noticing the past couple of years is that packaging in the luxury space is changing. It was very serious for a long time. Like serious as a heart attack. Very minimal, very chic, very understated. But right now we're seeing a lot more playfulness. We can unpack why that is, Jen. <laughs> so but proud right, of that one. I know, I know. But right now I wanted to focus on the font. And I want to put a really big fat disclaimer that I'm not... <laughs> It's the end of the summer, but that I'm not a graphic design expert and I'm definitely not a font expert. I know that there are real like typography geeks out there. I'm really hoping that my father and my brother are not listening to this. They are both graphic designers and like art directors. Please do not like... You're a beauty director at Harper's Bazaar. You obviously have a design eye. No, I have a very big design eye, but I'm saying like there are people who'll be like, what are you talking about? Well, what are you about to say? Let's hear it before we judge you. (laughs) But what I'm really seeing is... There is a real looseness and playfulness in a lot of luxury brands, okay? And I'm really, like, in their their fonts. And I'm really enjoying it. Okay, so I'm going to call out a few of my favorites in the space or audio, so you're going to have to go look yourself. Okay, future-wise, check out that brand. You know that brand, right? Mm Mm-hmm. They do, like, the slugging. Yeah. You think of that as luxury? Uh, it's not, it's not luxury, luxury. Prestige, but but okay. It's, like, prestige. It's, It's, like, aspirational. Got it. Juicy, juicy font. It's juicy. Yeah, it's a juicy font. It's dynamic. It's moving, right? It feels like it has like a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Aeond. Now, they just have an, an, like an A. Like it's not, it's not totally it, – the whole brand is not using like this font, but like it's like an A that's kind of moving. Mount Sapo, a brand called Bori. And then this one, I love this font, Herbar, H-E-R-B-A-R. Herbar? Herbar. I, you, do you say pronounce the H? Oh, it's, it's a Spanish word? Air- no, H, like herb. Yeah. I don't know. I would. You I made it I, British. Air bar. <laughs> I don't know. So it's just a movement. I wouldn't group it together as like this is one font, but it's just like a movement from this ultra minimalist design that I felt was yeah. like all kind of, I would look at like the racks at work and it would just be like all this like kind of super clean luxe, like that was just sort of devoid of a a personality or like the creator's character. And yeah. it just felt very, Francisco Costa used this word the other day and I loved it. He was like PowerPoint brand. You know what I mean? Just like, where's the heart? So I asked the team at Metier Creative, Aaron Kleinberg, like full disclosure as like a friend. And former guest on Fat And former Mascara. guest. Friend of the pod too. They, you know, they work with brands like Chanel, Augustinus Botter. Minimalist fonts, but yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also um, they do, fair, but they do have a lot of perspective on like fonts and stuff. So she asked her team, she got got the perspective of a millennial and a Gen Z, and I wanted to hear what they had to say. So Michael, he's Michael Lee Pretty. He's an an associate creative director at Metier. This is what he had to say, and I'm editing some of the thoughts just for time. And he said that the goopy typeface trend seems to be an emerging reaction to the more the decade long tech driven corporate minimalism and he used like the microsoft logo redesign in 2012 google in 2015 that eventually made its way into every corner of the luxury industry look at balenciaga saint laurent burberry ramoa balmain we've all seen the memes of fashion logo redesigns illustrating the transition from distinctive singular brand identities to the squint and you can't tell one from the other sameness preach and i thought yeah i thought that was really interesting but as we shift away from the monoculture dot 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 i'm really kind of like summarizing michael you had beautiful words but i'm just kind of condensing a little bit it's really as this move away from this indistinguishable sans serif to expressive, hard to ignore nouveau psychedelic waves. That's totally what I'm seeing, psychedelic waves. I was saying wavy, ravey conversationalist, but it's like yeah. psychedelic, right? But unlike previous eras of branding with more character and personality, this new wave has a similar quality to corporate minimalism and that it's all just starting to blur together. I know, everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. Right, so by the way, I'm, these brands that I mentioned... I'm using these as examples that I love. I think this is not negative on the brands that I've mentioned. 
I think this is more of a warning of brands to just be wary that this is not the way forward, that we should all be doing this. These are great examples and we have to be careful. And then our Gen Z expert, Camille Duncan, she's an art director at Metier and at Cydia. She had a really interesting perspective. She said that these bubbly font servicing and brands are a way for them to stand apart from the world of sans serif, which is what I think he was saying, but also be a part of the alt hyper trendy aware culture. And the ultimately, this is the end goal of trying to attain with this Gen Z community. So it's almost like a little wink, like I'm part of this new culture. I'm part of this like- Of course. Yeah. So I don't know, Jim, what do you think? This makes me think of, so Glossier was a good example of that sans serif, very minimalist kind of font. This summer, one of the graphic designers posted about, they did a summer capsule collection. And for the capsule collection, they did a wavy gravy font. (laughs) Wavy gravy. It set off rumors that they were rebranding. And I was like, if they rebrand, it's like, no, then it's just like millennial pink and everybody's doing it. I was like, don't rebrand. Yeah. Own your codes of your brand. And then they quickly clarified, no, that was just for the capsule collection, which I thought was smart because like they're getting in on the trend because this is a trend in design without like changing their corporate identity. But that case study is exactly what you're talking about, which is these shifts that every 10 years, it went to minimalism, it went to sans serif. Now it's moving wavy gravy. Do you know what these fonts remind me of? I studied Hebrew when I was younger at Hebrew school. And like the Hebrew alphabet is often made in this font, the old timey kind of font. And the edges have those little pinches to them. And it looks kind of wavy gravy. Oh, so I, I know s- what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. I looked up all the, the brands that you just mentioned. And I was like, oh, yeah, this, these always make me think of Hebrew for some reason. Like, But the, it's 70 psychedelic, the first person that you quoted, I think. described it much better than I would. Yeah, I really liked both of them. And I couldn't read everything they wrote and I thank them for their time. But it was really, I like this idea of like this psychedelic kind of more human, anti like kind of corporate luxury. I like what they're doing, but I I don't want to see two, three years from now, my racks filled with Me Too brands. What if Saint Laurent now? (laughs) (laughs) Can you picture Saint Laurent in the in the her bar or air bar font, like <laughs> just shift it, like italicize it and add the wavy gravy pointies to the edges. Yeah. No, I don't think they will, but. <laughs> but, and, but also like, I'm just uh, pulling back even further, that luxury or aspirational, however you want to categorize them, like, they don't have to be so serious. Yes. Like you could be luxe and prestige, but have a little fun. Yeah. Which is how I feel like you and I always feel about beauty. It's not supposed to be so serious. So if that's like kind of end result 10 years from now, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Wait, speaking of fun, not so serious beauty, we had the next item we want to talk about. Yeah. The Anna, first of all, Anna Sui. This oh. actually even, how funny is this? Think about original Anna Sui font from like the late 90s has the 70s wavy graviness to it, yeah, doesn't she, it? Yeah, she's like the queen of psychedelic fashion cool. Anna Sui is doing the coolest thing ever, but sadly, I can't get, no one, we can't get our hands on it. She is collaborating with this computer company called Asus. I, do you know, I don't know a computer person. Asus, A-S-U-S. It's a computer company. It's a company. Chinese, uh, yes, brand. Scented laptop. I'm here like in the stone age with a candle next to my computer, all right? Oh, you want the scented laptop, okay. Of course I do. All right, it's under $1,000, U.S. dollars. There's a pod. I've watched you. You can see, you can Google it. You can find like a it's little. It's called the Adol Book 14. Yes. Yeah. Only available in China. The package is retails for 969 US. Describe the pod. It just, you just pop it on the top. It's like, it's very shallow. It's not like some huge doohickey that hangs out. It's really seamless. And it's not even like a boring computer that has this like, oh no, it has the lavender and black and a sweet branding. It's totally decked out in Anna Sui. She's got the butterfly. You will be the coolest girl. It's very Olivia Rodrigo now, come to think yeah, of it. Totally, totally, yeah. She's Wait, a total like, Olivia Rodrigo is totally Anna Sui design. She's totally Anna Sui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the collaboration. Has that happened yet? I don't know. I don't know, but you know I have such a soft spot for Anna Sui. Uh, my luggage used to be Anna Sui. She does also, we love how we're saying like she, like Anna's out here making these licensing deals, but the no, Anna, Anna Sui, Sui the is just cash and checks, yeah. But they always pick cool ones. They're never... I had a Toomey Anna Sui Rolly suitcase that had that purple and black psychedelic. I loved that suitcase. But this has similar fashion. You get the computer, three pods with three cents. Did you wonder, were they the Anna Sui fragrances that we know and love? Because I did. They're not. 
There's three new scents that they came up with because I guess you don't want like a complex perfume wafting in your face as you're like trying to put together a deck. <laughs> Speak for, for work. yourself. Speak okay. for yourself. <laughs> but they're a little bit more simple and fresh. There's Be a New Her, Basil and Mandarin, and Rose of Man's Land. So you get three pods that you can pop into the laptop. And then I was like, oh, that makes sense because your laptop warms up a little bit anyway. I, first of all, you know that I'm so funny. I'm thinking of um, I love her. My old executive assistant at Cosmo, totally fragrance averse. She would have like beat me to death with my own laptop. At the oh, office. I didn't even think of that. And we've reported on how corporations that are pumping scent into their offices, people don't like it. There's always that person who has allergies. Janice, I think I named her Janice in accounting, and she does not like a fragrance. She will not like our laptop. Sorry if your name's Janice. One of my mom's best friends is Janice. She's wonderful. She's an ER nurse. She's like the coolest, but no, Janice in accounting, not so much. This is so cool, and I just love the idea of more scented office accessories and Anna Sui, just like world domination. I'm here for it. That is a back-to-school must-have. And moving on, you know I love a segue. Another back-to-school must-have. I just had a report on this because it's everywhere right now. The hot beauty item that all the high schoolers want for their back-to-school moment is the day styling wand. It was one of the most frequently highlighted beauty items. You know Casey Lewis. She's the youth culture expert. She has a sub-stack after school. And part of what she does is look through youth culture, find the trends, what's popping. Everybody in their backpacks apparently has this day styling wand. As I was putting this like in our Slack channel for news, Ellie, our intern, was like immediately like, true, confirmed, just tried it yesterday. (laughs) And I was like, See, yes, on the ground reporting, we have a secondary confirmation. (laughs) And this is just their styling cream in like a mascara tube with a little wand to tame flyaways if you're doing the sleek look. Not the newest product under the sun. I mean, (laughs) I've been reporting on these for 20 years now. Like every couple of years, a new brand has one. But this one's like the status one, $18 for this. But like then you're the cool girl who pulls it out of their backpack at high school and then everybody wants it. So if you want to be the cool person. Oh, God, I'm so glad I'm not in high school <laughs> As if you wouldn't have gotten the day styling one, you would have been all over it. <laughs> My oh, mom would have been like, you're getting the Garnier version. It's half the price. <laughs> Do they have it at TJ Maxx? Well, then you're not getting it. Not that I went back to that stuff. <laughs> Oh, my God. Back to school shopping memories at TJ Maxx with my mom. Love it. Oh, my God. Anyway, I'll link to this the in our episode. for the minimum, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were, we were Maxinistas before there was Maxinisting. <laughs> Except I remember I had to get skids. This was actually really embarrassing. Oh my God. Skids were like the skids. hot pants in my high school. And they're like those drawstring pants. But like they were really colorful and like... <sighs> Thing. You know, in Living Color, the TV show, like, go watch it. They're all wearing skids. Anyway, I remember. I remember. the patterns was like, there were cool patterns and not cool patterns. And my mom's like, I am not spending, I think it was like $38, whatever it was, the pair. She's like, if you can find them at TJ Maxx, we got there. So the pair I got was like pink, yellow, green, black plaid. And I was like, this isn't like the cool pattern, but I got them anyway. <laughs> Wait, what was the cool pattern? It wasn't that. You know, like, you just knew that wasn't the right version. Like, the North Face backpack, but you got like the wrong colorway. So I went to school in them and I was like, whatever, I like them. But it was my champion sweatshirt, but it was definitely like the off price <laughs> it's amazing what sticks with the one with us. I know. Oh my god! If I had those skids now, they, I would wear the sh- hell out of them. They were so comfy. I'm sure they're on Depop. <laughs> should I go look for skids? You should. Wow. Anyway, I'm sure you'll be all in the rage in Brooklyn. <laughs> well, I think that I no, could are pull you them off. No, you would. You could. I don't know. I'm bringing them back. What a silly name. What a silly item. But all these status items are always like that, aren't they? Like, it's just pants. It's just a styling wand. You can get it for cheaper. But you know what? That's a fun little back to school. So you get your day styling wand. Should we take a quick break? Let's take a quick break. Okay, it is time to raise a wand. As a reminder, you can text us because the raise a wand this week was texted to us. Our number is 646-481-8182. I do love a voice memo or a voice message though, because then we can play it. But Garrett and I last week, as you remember, were talking about what to buy in Germany, but then we wanted to know what you guys like to buy abroad and then very quickly realized our 
listeners are all over the world. So abroad for you might mean in the United States, like what you buy when you're here. So people have been texting and calling. Please keep those coming, 646-481-8182. But Gwyn, who's Canadian but now lives in California, texted us, and here's what she said. Hi, Jen, Jess, Julie, and Garrett. (laughs) Products that you can only buy in America. Hardcore OTC acne mitts. Panoxyl. The Ordinary Peeling Solution, and Over-the-Counter Different. These are the three. My Canadian niece was visiting this week, and I showed her all of the novel products at Ulta Beauty because in Canada, it's also d- difficult to find OTC sulfur products for acne, like De La Cruz Ointment, Peter Thomas Roth Mask. Love the show. Gwyn, the Canadian expat in Monterey. Side note, I was like, what's De La Cruz Ointment? What is that? If you Google it, you'll know the packaging. It is a standby from the drugstore that I've seen for years. I don't think I ever knew it was called De La Cruz ointment. It's a 10% sulfur cream. I actually talked to a formulator once about why sulfur also has an FDA monograph for acne medication, but you don't often see it like you see benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid. And they were telling me customers sometimes don't like it because at the strength that it works, changes the color of a formula. It sometimes smells a little bit, but When I had acne, it really worked for me because it's like very gentle because I'm also rosacea and dry yet with acne. So like if you can't handle benzoyl peroxide, don't sleep on sulfur. Sulfur is a really good treatment for acne. So the De La Cruz, I was looking back into it and I was like, this stuff, it's from DLC Laboratories, been around since 1963, originally launched in Southern California, still made in America, free of preservatives, gluten, vegan and vegetarian on the website says, not tested on animals. We love them. I love that. And it's still only $9.99. That's great. Yeah. Like, get some De La Cruz when you visit the United States, guys. That's yeah, a good I was one. surprised when I when when I left the U.S. and I um, couldn't get just like straight up Oxy or clean and clear benzoyl peroxide. Oh, when you were living in England? Yeah. I was really surprised by that because for me, like salicylic acid is not really that effective for me. Oh, to get, like, if you wanted a 5% BO wash, like, and you were in England, you'd have to go to your doctor. Yeah, I, yeah, and that's a whole other situation to go see a derm there. So, yeah, but you, if I just wanted any kind of benzoyl peroxide cream, you can't get it. They don't use those kind of ingredients. What else are you guys stocking up on when you travel, wherever you travel to, whatever's not home for you? Call us and tell us. Leave us a message or a raise a wand or a question, whatever you got. I have a very random raise a wand, like, question, like, throwing out, uh, throwing this out to the group. Super random. I've gone through two, and I don't like returning things. A lot of people like to buy and return, buy and return. It's really bad for the, God, I sound so, like, high horsey, like, sanctimonious, if anyone watches Southern Charm. <laughs> so sanctimonious. I don't like to buy and return. It's very bad for the environment. It's just, like, very wasteful. But I've sent two shower caddies to and fro from Amazon. I need something for my shower that holds all of my products, a little washcloth or like, you know, poof. What is the best shower caddy? Over the over the thing, over the shower Please see two episodes ago when Jess didn't have room for the a large shampoo bottle. You said you're fighting for your life yes, in your shower. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah, this, this is all the tracks now. Yeah, so you, the this is an ongoing struggle in yeah, your shower. Yeah, because I have toys in there. I've got like... So do you want an over the shower head hanging yes. one? Not one of those corners with three shelves? Uh, no, I don't want like a mildew farm. Thank you very much. No mildew farm. I destroyed my roommate Patty in my 20s. She had one of the ones in the corner of the shower that went floor to ceiling with like an extension rod. Yeah. And it had three shelves that were like corner shelves. And I don't know what I was thinking, but I like put my foot up on it once to shave. And it fell? Not only did it fall, like it like exploded off the wall and out of the shower and like products it's everywhere. A, it's a tension. It's a ten- I lost it. This was when fresh body scrub was still in yeah. glass. Yeah. There was a glass jar of fresh brown sugar body scrub. Why do you think I always mention I don't like glass thingies? Well, of course, of course. I mean, I don't think it comes in glass. So anymore. yeah, also, yeah, I don't I, th- I don't like the mildew farm because mildew does collect there. I know that from when I took out the the last one, because there was one in here when we moved. But also, yeah, I don't, I have like a small child who like doesn't understand rules. I don't want her to like touch it. Be able to grab at it. Grab at it to pull herself up. And then, yeah. So I want something that's out of sight. Okay, high up. Doesn't get too much mildew. Holds a lot of stuff. Yeah, rust proof. And it can hold a lot of stuff. I might call into the hotline with a suggestion. I think I have one for you. 
But I'm going to like leave that dangling as homework for next week so we can hear from other people too before I share. Excellent. Raise a one homework. Can I, can I do let's a raise a wand? Yeah, okay. let's do it. So I have a raise a wand and my raise a wand is a recommendation that I got from a facialist. I have, do you ever get like little kind of acne that's like not a real zip, but just like bumpies, bumpies, bumpies? Yes. There's many types of bumpies, but yes. Yeah. I, I'm not a derm, so I'm not going to diagnose. It's this kind of like whatever, but it's not a zit that's worth like, you can't pop it. You know, it's just like the skin's not great. Congestion. It's a papule, not a pustule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you will. You're it's a papule. <laughs> that was like a game show. Sullivan. Yeah, papule, pustule. I'm going to go with papule. So I, about a, a couple months ago, <laughs> I saw... Why are you laughing? Because that's a hilarious game show. Right? For I'll two papules. Papule pustule for 200. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and exactly. then you show a Alex, derm photo. Yeah. <laughs> it spins around. It's some horrible photo from the derm textbook. <laughs> this is something I would definitely like, definitely do. Okay. <laughs> I saw this wonderful facialist. Her name is Cara Peloso. She like does her own, she has her own little studio. And she was like, hmm, hmm. She asked me all these questions. If I change products, I said, no, not really. Simple, simple skincare. And she's like, maybe it's your towel. And I was like, oh, I clean towels. And then I started thinking, I don't want a bunch of little washcloths like lying around. I already have like 45 of those lying around. I don't need another one. She goes, why don't you try Clean Skin Club? Have you heard of that Clean Skin Club? This is sounding very... It sounds familiar. It sounded familiar to me too. I had to like look it up as soon as I left. It's a service. Again, I'm not like into having a million boxes come into the house, but every month I've been doing it for a couple of months. It's a little box of like tiny towels, biodegradable. Yeah. Why do you need a service? What happens? It's for you to like dry your face, like clean and dry your face. You have a fresh towel every time. And then you don't have the guilt of using like a new... So what, okay, explain the service to me. So then what happens after you've dried your face with a fresh, you never just been use, used it's before like, washcloth? It's like a bio-based, ultra-soft, single-use facial towel. Well, what happens to the facial towel after you use it? You throw it in the garbage, but it like degrades. Okay, so it's not plastic. It's not plastic. So it's like a paper towel, but like a biodegradable paper towel? Yes, Exactly. And how does it feel on your skin? It feels really good. And you can like, you know, rub your face with it. It's like softer than a regular washcloth or, you know, it, I think it's really soft and nice. And you don't reuse them. So you're using a fresh towel every time. And Wait, you don't... you've been doing this? Yeah, for like two months. Use code mask. No, just kidding. Yeah, no, I, know, I mean, I'd listen, like if they want to jump huh. on the FM train, they should. Because I really like these things. And then I don't have a million towels lying around. And I did notice that I have fewer little, I mean, this is just my skin. I don't, everyone has their own individual skin thing. So I'm not saying this clears up acne or anything like that. But for me, I like having a little fresh one every time at this point in my life when I have noticed that my skin has been a little okay. wild and wacky. So rather than the towel that has to get washed every single time and never does. Yeah, like a, a, a fresh washcloth. I see. Okay, Clean Skin Club. Was I was I clear it? explaining the fresh washcloth connection with my skin? Yes, I think so. Because she was saying, okay, we've figured out that it's not, you know, your skin. And care. what was causing it was whatever. Maybe I was would using be growing, like a, not to be yeah. gross, on your towel, a dirtier towel that might still have makeup or oil on it or whatever else that grew in your bathroom. Do you have a bathroom with a window? Just wondering. No. Me neither. And this is the thing that I think we've just nailed it right there. If you don't have a bathroom with a window in New York City, which is more and more like newer construction, they, they just don't. It's a downside because you can't open up that window and get fresh air in. And it does tend to get, I think, much more moist and mildewy. Yucky. In, yeah. Yeah. Yucky. I mean, of course, there's good ventilation in my bathroom, but I don't have a window either. And sometimes I like just like when I clean the bathroom, I put like a standing fan in there to like get it really dry because. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think it brings in a whole new set of beauty issues that these developers need to think about when they're making affordable housing for Americans. <laughs> Ventilation I mean, in your bed, in your bedroom. I would, that would be really, really nice if they did some thinking. I think that should be a, a for politics season 2024, this should be a really important point at the debates and everything. Affordable housing. With ventilated bathrooms. Ventilation. So Jess can stop having to... Well, you can keep <laughs> I, using a clean skin club. Yeah. I am sort of on a clean skin kick with my razor wand. I interviewed a friend of the pod, Daniel Martin, for a story in the cut Ooh. about like, how do you actually get your eye makeup off? Because we were talking about like, you know how JD Vance looks like he's wearing eyeliner, even though he's not. Like, yeah, to what's me, going looks, on with that? 
people have made, his wife says he definitely doesn't wear eyeliner. I whatever. don't think he wears eyeliner. I think he's just very dark lashes. If I ever wear black or brown eyeliner, it'll be three days later and my eyes will still look sooty and I don't want them to. I'm just, yeah. anyway. And someone wrote in about this. So I interviewed him about it and he was like, you know what you need to get. And so I did. I was influenced. The Garnier Micellar Water Pink Top. The other makeup artist I talked to likes the Bioderma, the classic Micellar Water. But he was like, Micellar Water is the only thing that's going to get the last, last remnants off. He, they all explain double cleanse, all the ways to get your oh, makeup off. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You know that old, that old trick, that old gym where mom stuck the Q-tip in her mouth and then wiped it away with that. That's what my mom used to do. And I was like, I'm not doing that. He's like, no. After you wash your face, if you, there's anything left, put a cotton swab in Garnier Micellar Water. That's the ticket. And then the other trick is a paddle-shaped cotton swab. That wasn't from him. That was from the other makeup Oh, artist. interesting. What, what does the paddle do? That tip actually wasn't from Daniel Martin. That was from another makeup artist, Amber Dreeden. The paddle, she says, the flattened cotton swab yeah. just picks up more of the eye makeup that's behind. Because think about how pointy some of the cotton swabs are and Q-tips. You don't want to put like, them right like, in your eye. And also then if you hold them sort of like parallel to your skin so that there's more surface area to pick up, it's like kind of itchy and not good. She yeah. said the paddle-shaped ones are really good at getting rid of the last remnants of eye makeup. That's so a great tip. Get yourself some little paddle-shaped swabbies and put them in the pink top. Get your beauty sleep. Get some air into your bathroom. Go open your bathroom I like the fan trick. Have one. It's probably like very obvious to many people, but I was like, oh, you can bring a fan in. I, th I think a lot of bathrooms have a window. I had a bathroom in a couple of my places, but they were older buildings. Older build, I think they had to because there was no ventilation, electric ventilation. So you yeah. had to have a window for that the bathrooms. If you look at like old pre-war apartments in New York City, they all have windows with bathrooms. I had a window there. Yeah. This has been Jess and Jen's real estate podcast. <laughs> We've changed the topic. Get your beauty sleep. We'll see you next week. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's your reviews and feedback that help us make the podcast even better. Head over to iTunes to rate and review us or email your thoughts to info at fatmascara.com. We also want to answer your beauty questions and hear what products you love. To share a Razor One product review or to ask a beauty question, email us at info at fatmascara. If you send it as a voice memo file, we can even share your voice on the podcast. You can also do that by leaving us a voice message. Our phone number in the United States is 646-481-8182. Thanks so much for listening.